Oh yeah, I was in a car accident a couple of the second of this month, of yeah. Ju January, and I just got my car back. What, what happened to you? I was parked at Leprechaun, and I was in my car, and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go through letters okay. and eat right here, because I just got deli food. Yeah, this yeah. guy leaves his truck on, and on okay. walks into Leprechaun, and his car somehow got into gear and what? just came and it was like those older like Ford like 1978 Fords and it had like a cattle rail and just smashed no and I was sitting way. in my driver's seat but I was turned so my breastbone hit the console yeah. and it came back here so like my body went <laughs> like that it made my door like into a sandwich what yeah and the cops all can you get out i'm like you want me to jump over my seat right. to get out and then <laughs> jump back in i'm like no 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 yeah, i'm yeah. good here that's crazy man yeah well and this is why like i like messaged you i for some reason like i'm not a basketball fan in any way shape or form mm -hmm. i'm not i like the kobe accident this right. sounds ridiculous but it hurt my heart Dude. so bad because there was nine people mm -hmm. in there and then like families died like whole families yeah, died man. you know and then the hashtag right the, the girl's girl dad. the girl dad ha hashtag which is you know the original reason why i, I messaged you mm -hmm. like i was like oh my gosh it just killed me and i don't know if you watched his interview where he's talking about people saying well you need a boy and you need this you know to Whatever. continue the, continue legacy. the legend the leg yeah. legacy and like the little girl's like whoa whoa i got this we're that good was so Ill, man. i was bawling like yeah. crying because yeah. i don't understand why people put so much emphasis on like having a boy, a boy. Yeah, man. and it really bothers me it's funny because before all that happened I'm sure you've gone through it. You have a girl, right? Yes. Well, right? And every time they ask about my kids, oh, how many kids you have? Like two. And, oh, you know, what do you have? My two girls. And like, oh, are you going to shoot for the boy? Like, it's never like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's always like, or they'll give me like the, oh, dang. Like, I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, bro, what? I'm saying? And instead of being like, you know, like when I found out that I was pregnant the second time. Right. You know, oh, I hope it's a boy. No, hope that it's healthy. Exactly. Hope that it's right. an easy labor right you know hope that wish yeah. that upon people this so we went in on i was like 16 weeks pregnant and the doctor told us it was a boy oh okay yeah this so your, we, oh your first right? no no my second one right, oh, right now oh okay the one okay. i'm currently carrying <laughs> okay okay they told us at 16 weeks oh you're having a boy okay okay i was like all right so when i was pregnant with my first one i read a bunch of like statistics on carrying boys and girls and I was very nervous about postpartum mm -hmm. and there was a lot of the statistics were, were that the boys would cause there's more probability of being caused postpartum with boys so I was very nervous about that okay so then the first one was a girl and then this one it was a boy so I was like in my head about it and I'm like okay I need to figure out like be proactive okay you know because postpartum depression is I keep saying postpartum, but I mean right. postpartum depression right. is a very real thing and not very many people think it is real, mm -hmm. but it's very real. You yeah. can't explain it. I've never gone through it, but you, you, you don't know how to handle it. Or some right. people don't know how to handle right. it. Um, so when he told us at 16 weeks, it was a boy, I left the clinic very confused and like uneasy. Mm. So we only told our families about it because there was something about that that bothered me but about i didn't know point. yeah but i didn't know what it was exactly like right. i was like oh my gosh like now we got to talk about like circumcising the boy we got to talk about this we got to talk about that and me and my husband couldn't figure out a name for the life of us right when i got into my car accident i had to go to labor and delivery it was three weeks after we found out that we were supposedly having a boy and she's like, oh, do you know the gender? And I'm like, yeah, it's a it's a boy. And she's like, mm-mm, these are girl parts. What? And I was like, oh, okay. And she did say that the umbilical cord was like hanging low. Oh. So the baby could have had the umbilical cord wrapped around her leg or something. Oh. And it looked like a penis. Oh, I got you. So she's like, maybe that's why there was that mistake. So, and like, I called my husband right away and I'm like, this is what they told me. And he's like, are you kidding? And I'm like, yeah. no, it, you know, and but there was like a sigh of relief and I don't know if it was because of the statistics of like postpartum depression or because we couldn't figure out a name or because maybe like I 
knew that I was supposed to be a girl or I don't know, right. I don't know, but I did feel almost like people were going to be disappointed. Do you know, because right, we had already told right. our family. So then having to turn around and like tell everybody, just kidding, it's a girl, yeah. was like hard for us. Yeah. Um, so, you know, to me, it's more so like, I just want to raise like good people. You yes, know I mean? like, yes. Like it. what ha like why isn't that what it is? Right. You know, like, I mean, for me, that's what the goal is. Like, you know, raise like some good girls and hope that they leave some kind of mark, like some kind of impact out there that helps somebody in a positive way. Yeah, I agree. You know, I mean, right now mine's a little monster, but we're working on it. <laughs> right, right, right. But, you know, we were talking about earlier about uh, the postpartum. Oh, yeah. So I had read this article. And um, I had never postpartum depression. Postpartum <laughs> depression, right, postpartum right. Postpartum means after you. I had read this article and I was telling my girl, like, I was like, dude, I had no idea like women went through this shit. But this, um, it was, I think, a guy wrote it about his wife, mm -hmm. and um, he was talking about how she went through like this, uh, almost like PTSD, right? Mm -hmm. like PTSD after the baby. And he's like, yeah, what a lot of people don't realize is like some women will have like PTSD after they have a child because they go through this it's a it's hormones. a traumatic ex, you know experience of having this this baby and all these hormones happen and all these things are going on and he just kind of went into detail of like she would just break down crying sometimes and she, and she still went to work after like a month or two or whatever it was and i was like god damn like i never i just thought you had the baby and you kept it moving you know I, what I mean? after i yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know after i had Aria that night I had her at 10.05 and I sat in the room and I was hysterically crying really and like Tristan's like what what and I'm like right. I don't know right but like with sentimiento crying right right and like nurses ran in and they're like what and I'm like again don't know yeah I couldn't even talk from how hard I was crying and then like after I, you know, don't want to talk about this after, like mm -hmm. I was telling Tristan, I'm like, don't talk to me about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't know what it was. And then like after a few months or something, I overheard him telling somebody like our like labor and delivery story. Yeah. And he was like, it was the most purest thing I've ever heard in my life. I want to cry. Yeah. Um, he's like, she just cried. He's like, for no reason. Yeah. He's like, she didn't know why. I didn't know why. He's like, but it just sounded like the most purest cry. And mm -hmm. I like thought about it and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's basically what it was. It was just like a cry of happiness, sadness, this whole, yeah, awkwardness, like weird, just yeah, all my emotions like came out. Yeah. It's so bizarre. Tristan always offered me his help. Like go lay down. I got the baby. And in my head, I'm like, he's going to kill her. <laughs> like he's not going to feed her enough. He's right. not, she's going to get rash. Cause he's not, right. not going to change. And I'm like, after a while, I'm like, that's her dad. Like, right, right. Knock it off. Go to sleep. Crazy. It yeah. took me about three or four months, and maybe it was it was some sort of like postpartum anxiety, maybe. Right. Because like my nieces and nephews didn't meet her until March or April, mm. and I had her in January. Oh, but I didn't want anybody to touch her, look yes. at her, cough at her, like anything, because yeah. of all these things that you hear. Right. Mm. Like I would not sleep for months. What? Yeah, there was like three, four months that I wasn't like sleeping and I would like go to my mom's house and like cry. And she's like, pues duerma then. I'm like, no, like I, I can't. What was that? Because I was just so scared of something happening. Yeah, oh, something happening, you. somebody taking her, somebody this, you know, like yeah. all of this stuff. But I grew up by myself. My siblings are 12 and 11 years older than me. Mm -hmm. So I grew up alone and I didn't really ever like, I had friends, but that stuff like fades and you always want to like be able to go home and like have that conversation with somebody that you trust that's obviously not gonna like turn around and talk about you but right. i i have it now because my siblings were we're still the same ages apart but we're adults now right so you're kind of on this your peers yeah. now almost yeah the same. so it's easier now but it was a really hard going home and being by myself right and i didn't want to do that to her and I always said I'm gonna have two kids two years apart and that's just what it is and we're done mm -hmm. but and where'd you go Eastern yeah is that where you met your husband or where'd you meet we met at a party in Ellensburg in Ellensburg yeah through a mutual friend were you still in college at the I time? was or out 
I had just graduated, so I was 22. Right. 22, 23, 2013. I was turning 23. 23? Yeah. yeah. I know exactly. Like, I didn't see you for a while. Did you leave Odell for a while? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I, was like, I remember, like, not seeing you. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I don't ever really go anywhere. Right. Yeah, you know? Tristan went commercial fishing June, July, and was back like early August. Dang. So he was in Alaska for about two months oh, over shit. the summer. That's dope. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Um, you know, he had like, he had some leave from work. So he's like, I'm going to, he used to do it before we met. He was a commercial fisher. Oh, okay. So that's how he made his money. Wow. That's um, crazy. And he got an opportunity to go back out there. He's like, what do I do? I'm like, I said, if you want to go, I support it. Go. That's dope though. That. And it was yeah. a very, very tough time. Like, I was a For single parent. Basically, yeah. Um, and it was very, very hard. So I applaud all those women that are single mothers and right. having to do it because it was the hardest time of my life. So it was, it was very hard and like my schedule and dropping her off and um, June and July, my parents are contractors, so they do like cherry season and all that stuff. Oh, so okay. they were in the midst of like cherry. Dang, so no one. Mm -hmm. So Sheesh. Um, my nieces stepped up and stepped in and helped me so much like That's... as far as like babysitting and stuff yeah. um but just like having to do the garbage and mm -hmm. all of the cleaning and the working and coming home to aria and like making food right. and you know we split a lot of things if i make food you clean if you make food i'll clean right you know that kind of stuff but i had nobody yeah. no if this guy planted like 85 sunflowers yeah here on the side of like the thing so we had like massive sunflowers and he's like your job is to water them <laughs> every day at this time and this time so i was waking up extra early to water the damn flowers <laughs> and like coming home and then like you know making dinner and all that stuff i'm like oh shit the flowers and i have to run outside at like eight o'clock right. and like water them and like when he get, came back they were just like huge and beautiful and amazing he's like you did so good i'm like i know I did. <laughs> i'm so glad you're home <laughs> oh man that is no and look. there was no reception up there so we did not talk we did oh, not damn. facetime we did not anything the first time we facetimed was when he went wherever he was into like anchorage oh. to get on his plane from anchorage to seattle and he called us Dude, yeah, you know, no, so. yeah, not one ounce of him is jealous. I have not just not one jealous bone in my body, yeah. and that's how I knew this was going to work. Yeah, no, because all my other relationships, like when I was in college and stuff, toxic as fuck. Yeah, no, because I was constantly jealous. What are you doing? Where are you at? Who are you, you know, like, and were you jealous? You think because of previous things or because they were jealous? I was jealous because I think I was insecure at the time. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, we'll be good. All right, well, thank you for coming. Yeah. All right. <laughs>